Howdy, howdy. What's up, everybody? Oh, I think I forgot to update this. Today's going to be some more work on the outro. So, it's a spoiler alert. You don't want to watch this stream if you don't want the plot, the story of Songbringer ruined for you. But if you've already played it, or if you don't care, welcome to the stream! Okay, so what I'm in the process of doing is um, uh, I've got the outro flowing now with um, going to different scenes, uh, areas of the game that you've been to, showing the characters, what happens to the characters after the end of the, of the game. Here it's showing basically the Rock and Bell are, they're sleeping, they're alive, but they are trapped aboard the, the tower, which is going out into space. The crew of Songbringers okay as well. They're alive, but they're also, their ship has crashed and they're all unconscious. This is gonna show Smith and Jib, if you didn't save the Smith, and Zero actually will show up too, and this will be Jib and Smith and Zero. So what I was I was letting it play there because I wanted to see how long it felt now. Uh, does it feel like satisfying enough an amount of time for the outro to play? And it does. It feels a lot better now. It's about the exactly the same length actually as the intro. They're both about oh a minute forty five or two maybe two minutes something like that. It's enough to give you a good satisfying feeling like wow cool that was a, ni a nice cutscenes. Um, and yeah, and then I can, I'll do some custom music and stuff for that too. What's up, Marza? Dude, how you been, man? And hey, what's up, Peter? Belzio. What's up, y'all? Yeah, doing great. Doing great. Yeah, I'm really excited about everything. Did you guys hear about um, coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and all that? Boy, what's up? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PS4. <laughs> no, I can't type. Yeah, it's coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I'm backed by this amazing publisher named Double Eleven. Double Eleven just helped help the game Songbringer get to PAX East. So we were just at PAX East, which is this huge event, like a hundred thousand. Their attendance is like a hundred thousand. So there were a lot of people. Um, it was very very humbling to see so many people, and it's all the games people were interested in, all the amazing games that were there. A lot of uh, really awesome indie games. So and AAA games. I was just very humbled to be there. And at one point, 
actually a few couple points during the weekend um people were lined up to play songbringer so it was like a really neat feeling to have songbringer on display i was dressed like a wizard i had a wizard a big old wizard hat on and my like kung fu armbands what's up feared killer game's going really well thanks marza yeah it was really fun and there were a lot of other people cosplaying there. I saw an amazing Darth Vader. Um, a really cool Bane. He had this awesome like voice um, box thing that made his voice sound all cool. It was a pretty neat event. There's like a lot of really exciting games coming out. People are really buzzed about the new Zelda game. Everybody's really digging that. And like... Um, what are the other, like, there's a lot of other really awesome AAA games there, like Lawless and, um, of course, Overwatch, you know. They had huge stages. Like, PAX East, they have, like, giant stages full of people showing their games and stuff, the AAAs. Yeah, yeah, Song is coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and the official uh, release window our window really of release is going to be this summer right so we haven't actually announced an actual date but it will definitely be this summer so we're launching all three platforms at once so it'll be coming out on steam for pc mac and linux um and playstation 4 and xbox one all at the same time so whatever platform you feel like playing it on we got you covered there might be other platforms later on, um, but yeah, we're not we're not planning for those at launch time. So we'll do a staggered you know release for anything else. Uh, no, this is Vim. Thanks, Fear Killer. Yeah, I've been using Vim lately. So I got two Vim. I got two console windows. These are. Um, this is just iTerm, right? I'm using iTerm, and I've got a split view here. I've got two panes, and this is where I use my data. So I go through data in this window, right? Like I've been working on the story a lot lately, so I'll be in here working on data. And then here I switch back and I can go to like, you know, the current code I'm working on. So yeah, I've been using Vim a lot because it's just a lot more efficient for your fingers <laughs> you have to type a lot less to get to get your code done this is really really great so what was I gonna do first I just I just played the intro the outro um, spoiler alert by the way this is totally I'm spoiling the end of the game here so watching me work on this is you know you either don't care about it being spoiled or or you already know Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. How? What have you been coding with lately? And how's everything been going, man? Oh uh, yeah. Well, uh, this this is basically it right here. I've basically, as far as development goes and programming goes, the biggest change is I've switched to Vim since you were watching last crash test. You don't care being spoiled? All right, cool. So the first thing I was going to do is change the story. So it just does... Um, I'm going to change... Like, everything to just dot, dot, dots. Because I want to focus on what it's... Not what it's saying, but... Um, but the visuals and the flow of everything. So I'm going to turn everything to just dot, dot, dots, and we'll play the outro again. And that'll help to focus on just what's going on visually on the screen. And then I'll, not, I'll need to start working on the next scene. So the next scene is um, the one where you either... So it depends on how you played the game, right? So you've got this choice. It's a lot like how in um, Super Metroid... 
you've got the choice of killing the animals or saving the animals, right? Saving them or letting them die on the planet, whatever you call it, right? Um, Songbringer has the same kind of thing. So you either can save the smith when Songbringer is crashing, or you can um, not save the smith and let him crash with the ship. Either way, the game still you can still complete the game, but it's an optional ending. So it's an al you get an alternate ending basically. It's not a totally different ending. It's just that one of the freaking scenes is different depending on what you did there in the game. So it's kind of interesting um, for you know either speed running the game or just you know running the game in general. It just adds a choice there. Like, do you save the smith or do you not save the smith? Because what saving the smith does is it shows you that the scene that you'll actually get to see at the end is Jib getting his body. Yeah, what's the right choice? So I'm trying to decide what to show instead of Jib getting his body. So if you didn't save the smith, you don't get to see Jib in, in, in his body. So, um, what should I show instead of that? I'm not sure yet for the default ending or whatever. Yeah, totally. You just open Steam. It'll update itself. Yep. Just open Steam. That's it. As long as you've got updates enabled for Songbringer. Okay, so let's make sure that works. With all those dot dots, if I got the right number of dot dots there. So it's going to play here and... Wait. Hold on a second. That's probably too loud for the stream. Yeah, on consoles? No, I'm not exactly quite sure um, what it'll be on consoles. I'm sh ah, I can't say. I don't know. I don't have control over that part. Um, I'm doing. I'm basically totally responsible for the Steam end of things, and I can tell you on Steam, um, it will be sixteen dollars. So I'm guessing it will be similar on consoles. I don't know. I can't commit. I can't give you a solid answer there. Top down the killer, yo. Yes, this is good old Valtry Marza. Hey everybody on the stream, Marza contributed to Valtry back in the day when it was being created. That was like two years ago, right? Two years ago. Okay, so let's see this outro again. This time with. The quieter volume. And so the first thing I'll be worth focusing on is this third scene. Oh, this is so much different without the text. Really focus on just the visuals. Okay, so this scene right here is where. Okay, so all those servers in the back are shouldn't be alive. Some of the lights will be killed. Um, the droid smith will be on the ground. The key shouldn't be there. And then there, Jib needs to be on the table, and Zero needs to be there. Okay, so let's get all these characters in there and stuff. How much is it? On? Yeah, 16 bucks on Steam. All right, so. I don't need this crate door tile. These are the light beams for that area. I don't think I need that anymore. Okay, this is where it, uh, this is the door system. I don't need that anymore. 
Okay, here. This is where it sets up the areas. So this is where it runs the phase outro. And it's got a series of different scenes. And for each different scene, it runs some actions when it starts the scene. Oh, yeah, that's right. Nice. Your game's coming out on iOS. And it's still using Valtteri. That's cool. Do you guys have a... um? Do you guys have a link you could share? I don't know if it's out yet though. Okay, so going to Smith. Why, why wasn't Smith there? Oh, because we had, we needed to have the right value for the, um, it's, this depends on the, what item is it again? Oh, item ship, no. Yeah, item ship fall, or no, Smith Quest. Damn, what is the, oh yeah, it's just item Smith. Constance, item Smith. No, it's not Smith. There's Smith, oh, item droid Smith. Oh yeah, cool. How has that process been lately with with Apple for approval? God, back in 2013, the last time I released an app on the App Store, it was hell. Oh, okay. Oh, cool, man. How was uh didn't you go to Japan? How was Japan? So one means you, three means you dropped him off. Five means you fix, he's fixing Jib. Okay, so I need to have Droid Smith item quantity three. Ah, oh, that totally depends on, okay, so anyways, I gotta give this save file. The Droid Smith. Is it, is it Smith or just Droid Smith? It's all the way Droid Smith, wow. Okay, so we need quantity three of that. Three to four days, that's it? Oh man, that's really, really short. Yeah, really, it was great. Yeah. The culture, the food, right? Mmm. Wow. Did you get to see some nature? Did you get to take a lot of, I bet you took a lot of pictures. I bet you got like a whole hard drive full of pictures. You're working with the fishbowl mafia. What's that? Too, too much of them? Yeah. Uh, you take care of goldfish kidnapping? Ah. Nice. Oh, Smith is just conditional. All right, so Smith, if it's the Smith one, we need to go to, all right, so we need a V3I, the position we're gonna go to. We need the hero, do we have the hero here? Nope. So get that hero. The four horsemen are back. <laughs> Wait, who's the fourth horse horseman?
Okay, so the position is either if you have whoops, this is gear count item droid smith. If you have five of those, that's when you go to world find pattern actually this is just world get start pause <laughs> who's the third two <laughs> that's right there were five or six definitely five or six four horsemen we had plenty It's star pause. I think it's just Z zero. Yeah, there we go. All right. And so otherwise, if you don't have five of the droid smith item, then you go back to ship systems. All right, there it's conditional. Yes, right. It's a philo it's more of a philosophy. It's like a All right. So, now that should change based up based on how much of a quantity of item droid smith one has. I believe this should put droid the smith like in a state where he can just he should be on the screen and like roaming around Oh yeah, there he is. Cool. So the droid's missed there. I wonder if he'll move around. No, it looks like he's just kind of stuck there. And that key just, uh, the key just shouldn't be there. How can I just get the key to not even be there? Hmm. What would be the best way to remove the key? Oh, yeah, yeah, you. Oh, yeah, the speed multiplier? Oh, let me show you a couple more things. Dang, there's a lot, a lot of like really cool debug stuff. Uh, let me just go to the home screen. I think you've seen God mode before, right? So there's God mode that makes you run really fast, and you can go through walls. Um, there's invincibility, you can disable or enable that, and that gives you back some health. Um, there's, yeah, speed up time. You can speed it up a lot, too. So, like, it's, you know, it's, it's playing the game out exactly as it would. It's just that it's so speeded up. I don't even have the sword, and that's what's going on. I'm like, why can't I attack anybody? I'm like, I forgot I turned the sword off. So, and then there's you can also slow down time a lot, which helps a lot for, you know, debugging animations and stuff like that. 
So really can help to be like, oh, I see what's going on or how it's resetting or whatever. See that? Anyways, um, and then there's also this Y button. I can change, like, show all this stuff. Or you can press Y again, and it shows enemies. There's some. And their current AI. All, it shows all the AI stuff. And then there's this, where it makes it kind of, like, semi-transparent. Lots of fun little tools. Yeah, and Songbringer can record its own input and play it back, and there's, um, yeah, let me show you that. It's kind of cool, too. So if you go to the main menu and you just leave it there for a minute, it will, um, it will transition into uh, a track mode. So it will actually be playing back input that's been recorded. So I'm just going to let it go here for a second. It should shift into that. I think it might take 15 seconds. But it's really helpful for demoing the game because I've been at a lot of... Um, I've demoed the game a lot played and been at a lot of events and sharing Songbringer as much as possible. and. Um, it really helps having it there. See, it's running a track mode. So this is some recorded playback, you know. It just basically just loads the input and plays it all back as if you were had just input that with your controller. It's not quite deterministic. I tried to get the random numbers to all be perfect every single time depending on your world seed, but it somehow doesn't quite play out perfectly, so I need to... I don't really care that much, I'd rather finish the game well than get the freaking attract mode working perfectly, but that's kind of a cool thing. Very helpful for events. Okay, so let's see if this works where your quantity of your droid smith changes stuff. Oh, it did. It did work to get that. Okay, so basically if you have um, droid smith quantity Five. It shouldn't do that. And also, I want to hide the key. Because you may not. Oh. Basically, in create items, it shouldn't create items if it's the outro. That's all the simplest way to do it. Create items. This is an area method that goes and creates all any items that should be in the area. Um, don't create items during the outro. Yeah, I'm using Xcode build. So let me show you what I'm actually doing here. I'm using some um, some shortcuts here in iTerm. Um, I use Command B, just like in just like in um, in Xcode, you would do Command B to build. And this builds Songbringer. Let me show you this whole command. Oh, that's lame. But yeah, basically what this does is it goes to Vim or inside Vim, it goes HL, which moves left, right, and then it goes, this is a command that basically saves the saves the current file if the current file has changed. That's so a really, really cool thing there, and this executes that command. And then it basically just goes, change to the Songbringer directory, run make, which basically just makes, which calls Xcode build. So make is, you know, part of my make file or whatever. Yeah, I tried XC build. So I'm you notice me, I'm using XC Pretty right here. So XC Pretty's great. I love it. And I tried XC build as well. But the big problem with Xcode build or XC build is that 
Um, it doesn't use derived data. It doesn't use your custom derived data folders. And it was just like, it kind of threw off the way my whole build structure worked. And it wasn't faster for me. So I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be, you know, shave a whole second off my build times. But it wasn't faster. I don't know why it wasn't for me, but it just wasn't. Yeah, but it looked really cool. It looks really promising. And I'm going to watch this project. And I think later on down the road, XC build could be a, a really good thing. I think they were working on the derived data thing from when I was reading the documentation or whatever. Yeah, and so I've got another command which basically just runs. So that's just make and make run. But it's exactly like the command B, but it's just command R. And then I'm using hammer spoon. This little thing here, this is called hammer spoon. And it's really great for customizing any shortcuts you want to do freaking anything. You have to freaking code in, Lo in Lua though to do it, to do it, whatever your things are. But basically I've, I can re remap command R all in any kind of application. Like, so I can remap command R for, um, you know, all the applications that I normally use, I can basically hit command R just about anywhere and it will run the game. So it will switch, to, it'll actually switch to my Vim terminal, run the game from there. Oh good, so the droid smith showed up there. Oh, so that's, that particular scene right there, the movement was a little bit different, or should be a little bit different, depending on if you have item droid smith 5 or not. So we'll change the area. And then if area pause.z is 0, which is the overworld one, we'll need to do a little bit different movement. Oh, this is just P. P.Z, this is starts the camera. I think it needed to start it definitely higher. It needed to be like starting up at 40, moving to zero, and maybe more like negative 40 to zero. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I, ju I just checked it out like three or four months ago. I looked at Xcode build. I tried it. I'm definitely using XC Pretty. It's very cool. There, there it is right there. It pipes my build command. Also, it pipes my build commands through build to, you know, to a log file and then also does XC Pretty. That all helps. All right, let's see what this looks like again. This time the Smith scene will have a little bit different movement. Oh, that's definitely too much. Oh, and the minus 40 doesn't work either. Oh, you can't really get much, too much minus really there. Okay, that needs to be maybe minus 10 at the most, but probably not, not even that. And 40 just down to zero would work. Or maybe minus 10. Yo, what's up, salad dongs? Oh, hey. It's going good, man. How you doing?
Cool, that was good. Maybe it, do, it does need a little bit of movement. Like, maybe, maybe five. It's a tiny bit of movement there. Doing all right. Good to hear, man. What you working on today? Left his shirt on the podium. Oh. I think I know what you're talking about. That oil spill there? Yeah. So these will all have to these scenes will have to change. So I'm working on these like um like the other scene on the ship song ringer, that should be like that's gonna be a crashed. Like look, this ship's gonna look a lot more crashed and stuff. So I want zero to appear. Zero just appears like near jib. Has it? I don't know. I haven't upgraded. It's been on my list. Like I'm always like, ah, I should upgrade Coco Studio X, but like it's our. I've been using this version of Coco Studio X for so long that it's like so stable. I've had so many people test it out on so many different Windows, you know, ver versions of Windows, basically. <laughs> that you know, I'm I'm a lot more confident in the Coco Studio X 3.9 version I have right now rather than upgrading it. Because I tried upgrading it and everything broke. And I was like, really? Because they, they change stuff so much. Like every single every single time they release a new version of Coco Studio X, there's something that breaks in your game. You know, if you, it doesn't matter what it is. So like, you know, I've let it go for so long that basically there's a lot of things that would break. And, a lot of, and I wouldn't trust it as much as I trust the version of Coco Studio X I have now. So I'm just going to... I'm just going to stick with this version. I'm going to release Songbringer with Coco Studio X 3.9. You know, it's not like it's not like Coco Studio X has changed radically since then. It's only been mostly bug fixes and stuff. Oh, and they've added a lot of features I don't need. Oh yeah, your AC, that's right. Your it's drained your will to be creative. Oh. Yeah, you're like never upgrade the engine in the middle of project. I I I'm starting to feel that way too. That too, like I've upgraded projects in the middle, but like damn, stably unstable. It is. It's a fairly mature engine at this point. If it were 1.0, it would make a lot of difference. If it, you know, in 2.0, it even kind of still was making a little, a little bit of a difference. But 3.0, you know, they restructured it and made it. Uh, multi-threaded for the renderer and you know so the basic the basic things the the, the overall structure of coco studio x is what it is you know i got to meet oh, i got to meet ricardo quesada um the, he's the guy that created the original coco studio iphone and he's now the head developer of Coco's 2DX, um, working for Chu Kong. And um, he's I think he's based here in, in the Bay Area. But anyways, I met him at GDC. I was like, I went up and I was like, I was wandering around GDC at the expo. And I was checking out games and looking at people's booths and stuff like that. And I stumbled across the Coco's 2DX booth. I'm like, oh, what's up, Coco's 2DX? And I shook the guy's hand there. I'm like, hey, are you part of the Coco's 2DX team? He's all, yes. And I'm like, oh, thank you for Coco's 2DX. I've been using it for years. It's a great engine. And um, and then he's like, yeah. Nah. I'm like, what's your name? He's all, my name is Ricardo. I'm all, Ricardo Quesada, no way. It's you. 
No, he didn't. He asked. He asked if I had a, what my game was called, and I told him. But I didn't. I think I may have given him my card. I don't know. Your next video game will be the Attack of the Aggressive Potatoes. So we need to trigger zero to appear, which means in create zero, we need to allow him to appear if it's the overworld. Yeah, I think, um, I think he's aware of the game actually. I remember I remember posting it on the Coco Studio forums when I was first starting Songbringer and he's he, he like he he mentioned on the forums right then. He's like, "Hey, this looks really cool. Thanks." Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's mostly been mobile games. Because it came from that whole world. Coco's 2D X was just like the, you know, making it, making it work for other platforms. But the, you know, the focus was always on the mobile. Okay, so we need a special case for if um, these are normal overworld. We need some special cases if um, this is during the outro. Yeah, they finally get it. Yeah, when they finally moved to C++, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm so glad. I was getting used to Objective-C, but I really missed being able to code for Windows and, like, you know, put your game based on any platform. Yeah, yep. There's a ton of them. Ray Wenderlich has, like, a ton of guides about Coco's 2D and Coco's 2DX. So Flux is not in here, huh? Flux. Okay, now if it's during the outro, we want to appear at the world get start pause for Z0. And max uh, doesn't matter about maximum destination. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. The portability part. Yeah, didn't. What did they? I thought somebody was working on that. I don't know. All right, so that should enable zero to appear. We should get the flux type up here though. And save it because we're gonna need it later. I know, right? 
They do have those. There is some cross-platform implementations. What's the cross-platform implementation of Coco? It's Coco open source. What's it called? No, is it GNU Step? Yeah, here it is. It's GNU Step. The framework closely follows Apple's Cocoa API, but it's portable. So basically, their goal is to basically is basically to replace Cocoa with cross-platform open source stuff. Yeah, I heard that. I heard, I heard they finally made it like that. But you, do you don't you still depend on Coco? What's up? Why not win? Oh yeah, you knew about this. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, crazy! You're taking you're taking your test for your comp computer science three years early. That's crazy. That's crazy early. Oh, zero peers near a fountain. This is a good one. We'll duplicate that. So if, whoops, <laughs> if flux type equals k flux outro this is where zero appears next to smith and jib during the outro okay i'm just gonna leave this as it is like that let's see if this works Oh, that's cool. So Swift actually, they build in some of these basic things that like dictionary and array and all that. So you don't have to freaking rely on Coco. Is that what you're trying to share here? This is really cool. Die Harders. That's cool. See if this works. Well, foundation, that's right. Right, right, right. But foundation, even wasn't even foundation, wasn't that like closed source? Tiny flicker there that time. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's walking north into the cave. He's like, See ya. No, I, I want so I want him to appear right in the middle of the screen and like look left or something. Dur none. Oh no, he did, he did Desi. Okay, no, so we wanna do this. This one should be the highest priority here. Why is that Desi? Why is this like that? Yeah. So maybe it wasn't GNU step, but I think there was another one where they were trying to make like an open source foundation. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, 
Oops. Makes it not work. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But foundation is kind of something you basically need. It's, you kind of need it to use any kind of Objective-C app. You're going to have to use foundation at some point. So it's like they should just make that part of it. So I hope that's what... Is that what they did with Swift? So basically, did, did they finally make foundation part of the language with Swift? All right, so there he appears next to Smith the Jib. This should be like W2. Why is this width minus one? Should be W2. <laughs> right that's what I'm talking about you could you could but you wouldn't if you're if you're ever to use Objective-C on what on the platform on any any platform that you need to use Objective-C you have to do some platformy stuff to get things running which requires a little bit of foundation Huh, so it was built from scratch. That's cool. Let's make this W2 minus 2 and H2 minus 1 and he should be facing east. I saw it flicker there again, the last frame. So zero wasn't there the whole time. Maybe this should be none. Right. What's going on? You running or what? Run yourself, game. Run before I get you. You are going to be gotten.
Where you at, Zero? Damn. You appeared last time. All right, well, so this is how I debug. I have to open Xcode to debug, but I got a pretty cool script that makes it really easy. So whenever I find a place that, a, a line of code that I want to debug, I can just have this one command which takes my current file in Vim and line number and expands it. This is the command that it just ran that just like gives me the current file and line number. And then it's this is all written in Hammerspoon. So I have this Hammerspoon thing that basically just, you know, does that and then op does the command O to open it up and basically puts me right there at that line and then adds a breakpoint. So oh, it's really great. So when I need to debug, right, I can just set a breakpoint and then also the command R, which I was using earlier to to build and run within Vim. If it detects that Xcode is open, it will run from Xcode. So check it out. I'm just going to hit Command R while I'm here in Vim. And it runs it from Xcode and then switches me back to, to iTerm if I want to keep working there. But see there, it's actually running in Xcode. So if you're debugging and you got breakpoints and stuff like that, it just automatically works and runs from Xcode. And then when Xcode is closed, it just runs straight from the command line using Xcode build and running the, the binary directly. So that's a huge time saver. I can most of the time in the day I can work without Xcode open, which is great. You know, Xcode just makes it all slower. Xcode is really slow to code with and as well to run things compared to running things just straight from the command line in Vim. Yeah, Hammerspoon's pretty powerful. The most the the really great thing I just found out recently about it is that you can you can bind things, you can bind your regular commands that you would use like command R for example is something you would use in um in if you're in Chrome or Safari or something like that and you hit command R, that means that you want to refresh the page, right? So I've got this command, right? So I bind the command R to this smart run function. And then in smart run, it detects the current name of the current application before it does anything. So like if it's Chrome, here's, here's this is where, if it's Chrome, it just reloads the page. If it's Safari, it reloads the page. But otherwise, if I'm in other applications, it does my Xcode run script, which could, which prefers to run it in Vim if possible. Nice. What's up, Ludima? Uh, no, I've not officially. I've yes, I've toyed with it. I've I've played. I've turned on AppCode, tried it briefly, but I prefer this this sort of minimal bare Vim thing. I find it to be a really fast and efficient way to code. So okay, I need I set a breakpoint there, right? Yeah, we got a break. Sweet here. We hit this breakpoint, so that means it is creating it, it is creating zero. His destination it should be a seven, yeah, seven zero zero right at the home screen. Right? Now that I now that I'm comfortable with Vim style keys, that's another reason why I close Xcode all the time. I'm like, oh my god, I can't code. I can't code in regular text editors anymore. They're not fast enough. Nice. Uh, no, I use Vim. I'm using Vim in the command line to use Xcode build. So I'm actually using Xcode. I'm not using Lion. I'm not using anything like that. I just have my projects open in a text editor for on the command line, and I'm in. And when I run, I'm actually running Xcode build, which is a command line access to Xcode and its build system. Adam up here is really great. Yeah. So the flux type is outro.
This is area area pod seven zero zero. Why isn't he appearing? His direction is none. Oh, he might be right next to the hero. Yeah. That's the problem. Okay, so this needs to be if flux type's not equal to K flux outro. We can just close Xcode now, now that we're done debugging. Back to pure Vim. All right. Just update that. There we go. Beautify that cleans your code automatically. Sweet. That's that's really helpful. I think Vim can do that too. I don't even learn how to do it yet though. Oh. Okay, let's see if this works. There he is, nice. Okay, so he's appearing there. What's, what the hell is wrong with his shadow? That was really freaky. His shadow is super high. It's, his shadow is high. Yeah, we gotta clean up that oil spill. Oil spill on aisle three. We need to clean up. We need a droid smith there. Okay, so he was a little high and his shadow was high. Okay, so he shouldn't, he needs to appear, but then stay there. And he needs to go up one more. That's a pretty good placement for him, I think. Let's look at this screenshot. Yeah, so he appeared, yeah, if he was just one more to the north, maybe one more to the, no, that's close enough for him there. Yeah, that's good. And it needs to stay there. So what mode is he being put in? He's being put into mode one. This is mode one. This is mode one. This one, we might need to do a different mode. So I'll open up Zero's AI. He's got some AIs. One is him walking off the edge of the screen, so he does this mirage thing. Fix and continue? What's that? Bomb, walk on. All right, let's do mode 10. This is the near jib AI. If mode 10. Um, if timer began, we do we need to do um, his animation called Mirage. If timer begin, animate Mirage. Is that it? Target hero. If 
I guess it's just animate Mirage if time begin. Yeah, if mode 10, if timer begin, animate Mirage, delay animate, mode 11, and in mode 11 he does nothing. He just stands there. Okay, so then in Oops. In here, he needs to set mode 10. So he just stands there after he appears. You do code changes. Oh, oh, oh. You could, right, that's neat. Oh, I, had, I didn't know you could do that recently. So when did they add that? That's cool. Oh, it was, that's an old thing? Oh. Oh, it was for Objective C. Oh, I don't know. I didn't I didn't know they had that. That's cool. You can do that with Windows. Um, you can like code your stuff so that it uses a DLL and then you can reload the DLL at runtime. There's some tricks to it to get it right, but um, I always preferred to have a really fastly running game that you can just kind of just get to that point, you know, within a couple seconds of running. Like I can run here, and it takes maybe five seconds or whatever to build a single source file and then link it and run it and load it. So it's not that long, right? That was seven seconds with the streaming software running. So. I don't know. It'd be nice to edit code live though. Without having to recompile. I also prefer to use data as much as possible. So, um, like Songbringer so far is about 85,000 lines of source code. It's like 35,000 lines of data though. There's a lot of data. And what's so great about data is you don't have to recompile to use it. Good, he's just standing there. That's a good angle for him. The shadow looks good as well. But I want it to delay a little bit longer before he appears there. So we need to go to his code and then his mode. This one, if mode 10, if timer begin, we'll go delay a little bit. So I don't know, it should be about a second. Maybe two seconds. Let's delay two seconds. Set mode 11. If mode 11, animate mirage, delay animate mode 12. <laughs> Dan is also the best Star Trek character. Our next gen character. I like the I like the new Star Trek movies a lot. I think they're freaking they're awesome. Yeah, that was good. A nice two second delay before he appears. Maybe it starts a little too high. It's too high! So she started more at like 30 to negative 10. Yeah. Okay, is this, this scene might be finished actually. Dang. 
Yes, I did see the Rain World came out. I gotta get it while it's still on sale. I can't wait to play Rain World. I'm not sure if I'll have time to play Rain World right now during this month. This is a very, very busy month for me. I mean, all of April. I'm already thinking it's April. This is when a lot of the work for a Songbringer will get finished, is this next month. All the final changes, making sure the game is all good. Basically, I'm putting... The Songbringer will be like version 1.0 in about a month from now. Oh, he's not working on him. Why isn't he doing his working animation? Yeah, crunch time. This is, yep. Crunching to finish the game. I, I've almost got this stuff finished. The final cutscenes and the final boss and the final dungeon and all that. This is going to be so much weight off my shoulders to have this finished. I'll be like, yes! The rest is all downhill from here. Yeah, I got to play it. I got to play it at GDC, and so I kind of got a good feel for it, what it was like. So I'm looking forward to buying it, trying it out for real, starting from the beginning. I'm not sure if that was a demo. Like, a de I'm not sure where in the in the Rain World experience that put you. It didn't really explain much, you know. But uh, I like that. I like the. I like it at expos when you can just rock up and try somebody's game and not have them try and pitch it at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I kind of don't like being pitched. I like to ask questions if I have questions, but I don't like it when somebody just, you know, accosts you and tries to pitch you their game. It's like, God, I... Let me let me explore this. Let me let me find this on my own. Let me enjoy this experience for myself, man. Back off. Let me play your game and enjoy it if I will. So I like those I like those unmanned booths. It's really nice to see at Expos to see an unmanned booth. The game speaks for itself. That's kind of my philosophy. That would be the that's the ultimate ideal. But still if, you, if you're going and you're setting up a booth, you're going to need to be there. There's a lot of people to talk to and people that have questions and stuff like that and press, interviews, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very important to be at your booth. I'm rambling. I'm just rambling. Sorry. Uh, he didn't do his animation. Let's find out why. Create misc NPC. No, maybe it's a different one. Create Droid Smith. Smith. Where does it create the smith? You need to sleep. Oh. Oh wow, that was Xcode 1.x and they got rid of it. Oh. Okay, I know there's a smith.txt. So where... Oh, there it is, create the smith tile.
what? Oh, that's really... Let's just get rid of that. We're not using this anymore. No need that. Okay, I'm trying to still figure out how to how to create the Smith. He's he's this sometimes. Oh, that's right. He's a, he's like a hero. So he can be created as a hero. He can be created as a friggin' a regular NPC. Man, this guy is a really versatile NPC. Good night, Marza. All right, that's the. Oh, here it is, Smith Worker. Smith Worker Two. Smith Worker Two. Smith Worker Two. Why do you not? Is it your AI? That's it. AI run while paused. I think that ought to enable him to be running during the outro. So he should be going re -re -re, using his saw and stuff to fix Jib. What you doing? You're not using your saw? Why not? Damn it. All right. I think, well, yeah, it must be creating the Smith worker too because it's got that jib dead entity on the ground that he should be working on. So why, what's wrong with the Smith Worker 2's AI? Is it even running? Select two jib. If timer begin, target name jib dead. Well, that's right, he has these timers and stuff. Let's see if, does it eat? Oh, do I need the item jib dead? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it doesn't have target jib dead. Okay, I need to see if this happens. Doesn't have the dead jib. Is it, in fact, creating the Smith Worker 2? Good, it is. It's definitely creating this jib dead entity. And it's also got the Smith Worker 2 created. So that explains that. Uh, so why isn't Smith Worker 2 working on the, 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 the dead jib? What's with that.
Hmm. Okay, wait. If I was on the home screen... And I had the Droid Smith 5. And I did um, Jib Dead. Hold on. What if I didn't have the Jib Dead? Trying to debug this situation. Jib on the ground. Yay, he's working on him. Oh, come on, man. Is that it? Oh, maybe that's it. He's just too infrequently doing his working on Jib actions. So you can check a player's item from code now. How did I do that? I think it made me lightning boss. Boss Bomber? I don't know. I have to look at the AI system for that. Quantity, that's it. So it's if quantity Ah, that's it. It was Lightning Boss Stealer or Giver. I knew I was it was on the right track there. Now, if we've got if quantity ending whatever. Okay. Now that makes sense. So zero, not zero, but Smith Worker two. And this is run while pause, right? Oh, it's flags run while paused. Oh, duh. Duh, there we go. That should fix it. And now we can make his AI a little bit of a less de delay between these. So just go select sequence if quantity ending is anything more than zero then set timer needs to do a saw like every three three to five seconds otherwise the timer is just five to seven There, so that should make him do his saw faster during the outro. Music.
I don't know. The music wasn't playing there. But not the focus of what I'm working on right now. I'm just going to ignore that. Okay, so now it should run the outro. The Smith Worker 2 should be able to run his AI. So he should work on Jib during the cutscene. Okay, I, I don't want it to play his saw sound if so I'm actually gonna build that into this sequence there so if you've got corner if you're doing the ending it does a faster saw but it does not make the sound for the saw. And if you're not doing the ending, then it does do the sound saw. Okay, the jib dead entity. Needs a little position. Let's try moving it up about 10 pixels. So it looks more like the Smith is actually working on him instead of him being like all Got a little collision size, maybe I shouldn't do it. Anchor, this should be a position. That's better, but you can't see Jib as well. So he needs to be a little bit more peeking out to the side. Maybe two pixels ought to do it. Okay, oh, he still made the sound. What was that? Should have an ending item. I have ending, ending three. Oh, how about if quantity is greater than... Greater than zero. I think that might be what it is. AI system. Was that what that was? Behavior quantity. 
Yeah, you can use less than, greater than, otherwise it does equal. Uh-huh, so I definitely needed this if quantity ending greater than zero for that to function properly. So now we should do it a little more often, as well as target thing. Hmm. Kind of want there should be some delay before. Well, it doesn't matter because we're not going to play the sound anymore. And in fact, oh, one more thing. This should be a little bit less time. It should be like maybe two to four. There we go. Now it's just soundless. Cool. That was good. I, I like seeing zero there. It shows that he's a, an integral part of everything. Good. Okay, so ha that one of those scenes is now finished. That's great. Yay! So I got two of those scenes finished. I got to do the next scene. We'll be um, working on the same thing. If you didn't save Smith, it'll be the same kind of scene, and but back aboard Songbringer. And then the next scene after that will be putting Jib on Smith's laser platform thing. But I'm gonna be doing those later tonight after I get some dinner or some late lunch or whatever. Whatever you would consider getting food right now. Four o'clock. Is it four o'clock? Four. It's almost four twenty. My favorite time of day. Okay, so I'm just gonna check all this in, even these outro dot dot dots. For now. Don't create items during the outro. The Oh, zero appearing on the outro. And then the Smith scene being conditional depending on your item droid Smith quantity. Okay. This is all looking good. This code review passed. Pass the code review. This is Smith plus zero plus Jib on Overworld. There we go. All right. Well, that's it for today's stream. Thank you all so much for watching. Appreciate you. And we'll see y'all next time. Have a good one.